evening. Uh, welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, for August 16th, 2012. Um, just introduce myself and the board members. I am Sarah Trees. I'm acting chair tonight because our chairman is not here. Uh, to my left is member John Hallen. To my right is our newest member, Frank Lynch. We're going to be taking things a little bit out of order because Mr. Mayor Beto has another appointment in in a neighboring town, so I hope that that is not a problem for anyone. Mr. Marabito? Thank you. Um, and you want to read it, Nicole? Uh, Paul well, let, oh, let, well, we'll let Nicole read the official notice right. first. Um, Richard Cazari. Cazari. Cazari, sorry. Of 60 Elm Street and Byfield Mass request MDL to have a 48 second six special permit binding to construct an addition which will increase the growth square footage of the pre existing non conforming single family dwelling by another 36%. The dwelling is located at 9 inches. Okay. Mr. Mayor Beto? My name is uh, Paul Mayor Beto from Ross Engineering Company, representing the owner of the applicant. Um, the subject property was purchased by uh, Mr. Casari's um, uh, parents back in 1947, which time they uh, constructed a, a 530 foot square foot house here. It's, it's relatively small. Um, the application has been filed. Um, pursuant to Section 830 of the Zoning Bylaw, as the structure is not 30 feet from the front lot line, it's only 21 feet. That is the only existing uh, non-conformity. We're also filing, um, we're, we're filing to um, seek approval to build an addition to the existing dwelling, which is not conforming. Um, uh, uh, the existing proposed structure is what's shown in brown on the plan. Um, there's a 136% increase in the West Florida area. Um, the proposed structure will meet all of the required setback lines. Um, there's a small shed in the rear, which will be um, removed and replaced within the setback line shown on the plan. Uh, again, it does have the required lot area, the required frontage, lot depth, and setback. So, for that, I'll end my presentation and answer any question. I, mean, I, I should note, I did in the narrative provide an analysis for the special permit criteria where this is the five criteria of my members to the board. Do you have any questions on that? Do you have any uh, renderings of what the proposed um, this is going to look like? I do have, it's, it's a, uh, it, uh, you can see the photographs, it's a one-story house now. The existing is going to have uh, you know, the same roof lines. Um, this is what you see from the street. This would be the existing. You're going to have the year and the left. It's got it's a one-story structure. There's photographs in the application. The small house now will be open to the small one in this And then the is the existing dwelling going to remain, or is that? Yes, they're, add, add, they're going to add to it. How do you get from the existing dwelling to the proposed addition? Is it all, it looks like open decks. Is there a way to get? Oh, this is going to be removed. This is an existing deck. Which okay. Is, so that will be. That's gone. Okay. Right, yeah, I, I just colored that in brown. You know, the brown is, is the outline of the new house. Okay. For the addition. And what they'll do is they have an open deck in the rear of the house. All right. That answers the question. Any other questions? Do you have any questions? No. Is there any questions or comments by the audience? Please, uh, if you could just stand and identify yourself. Um, my name is Lydia Green, and I live on 12 Maple. So I think I'm directly behind the house. Uh, yeah, and um, I was just wondering what the distance is between the, the, the new house and my property line. Okay. Um, this is showing the plan here. This, this is the line that the house could be built up to. Uh -huh. This line is 30 feet back in the property line. The proposed house, or I'm sorry, the, it's uh, 20 feet back in this district. The, the new house will be 30.9 feet back, so the, the new house is actually further away from you than it has to be. Which is, how, how, can you tell, just tell me how many feet the new house is from the, the property line? The property line. Um, 30.9 feet. Okay. 
Which one of those is the existing? I'm sorry, do you have to identify yourself first? Joe McSweeney and we live kitty corner to the house. Which um, which building is the existing house there? That's the one shown in yellow. Okay. Oh. All right. So the building is to the right of it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this, this is the new addition yeah, here. To the left of it. It's actually to the left as you look at it from the street. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody else have any questions? Any discussion? No. Any, someone, want to, someone want to make a motion? Motion to grant uh, special permit finding to construct an addition uh, which will increase gross square footage of pre existing non conforming single family dwelling by 136%. Uh, the dwelling is located at 19 Ridgefield Road and reflected in uh, Ross Engineering drawing dated July 16, 2012. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank You're good to go. Who's who's um whose turn? I know it must be Ed. I must be Ed's right now. And Peter, but um, you guys. I mean, you all you both wrote one the last time. Can you wait? I'll, I'll, I'll start if you want. Okay. Me. Yeah. Can you maybe you Paul? Yeah. Easy one. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. And if Paul, uh, maybe Paul could um, Just email it to him. Yeah, well, or you can email it to me, and then I'll okay. pass it on to Frank. Okay, you probably have my email. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You know what? Can we just get um, Mike Hayes out of the way too? Sure. Here. No, um, I talked to Mike. Mike. Um, Mike is looking for an extension to his extension. And um, I spoke with him, and there has been just one week ago um, a new law um, where they've extended the extensions. So basically, uh, <laughs> um, I, I have a copy of it for the file, but the new law says that the Permit Extension Act has, um, of 2012 says that he doesn't need to do anything and we don't need to do anything. He's automatically extended. So um, I have a copy of that for the file, and I don't know. Do you need a copy of this? You know, um the, ex the original permit was granted in 2008. Correct. Extended. Correct. When? To when? Do you know? it, well, it's so, the new September. law says you. Well, the new was, law is four years from, from correct. the date it would. Originally to expire. So he would have to okay, 2014. So he, he under this, he would have had. Okay, he would have had two years normally. Correct. And now he has four years from that date. Correct. 2014. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So. so we don't need to do anything. We don't need to do anything. Uh, so he didn't need to be here. It it it's a, the Permit Extension Act of um, 2012. It was just it was just signed into law on the 8th, I think, of August. So are you, the board doesn't even have to make a motion or do anything? So it's, it specifically provides we don't have to do anything. So anyway, so that's. That was an easy one. Okay. Next. <laughs> Next we have um, Susan Langer-Strom of 55 Kenneth Road requests MDL Chapter 48, Section 6 Special Permit Finding to construct an addition which will increase the <coughs> square footage of a pre-existing non-conforming single family dwelling by more than 20%. The dwelling is located at 55 Kenneth Road. Hi, I'm Hi. Susan. Come on up. Have a presentation. You don't have one? No, no we saying. expect one. Oh, <laughs> well, why don't you just start by um, oh, yeah. okay. have a right seat. Here. Okay. Um, tell us what you're looking to do. Uh, we are looking to add on a garage with um, a room above the garage, and it is over 20% of the house. It's like 34%. I think, and the property, I think, is 9,600 square feet. Um, I, I thought it was two lots, but it's not. It's just one big lot. So there's a you know, huge chunk of space there. So it'll, it'll look good. 
I'm sure your neighbors are looking for hopeful. Um, how, how big is the house now as it exists? How many square feet about? Uh, probably like maybe I, I don't recall. Oh, okay, maybe we, I had the paperwork and done with the maybe, application. No, I think we brought it in. Maybe 2000 Yeah, it's about 2000 and the addition was about 30% greater, as I recall. It's sort of 20. I just want to mention that there are other nonconformities. The, um, the there's a sideline nonconformity 3.1 feet, and front yard nonconformity 22.3 feet. Is that good? In the, in the lot size. That's bad. That's why it's not conforming. Oh. Just, just it it is what it is. It's All not. Right. It doesn't affect me. Oh, okay. But the addition's going to be. Um, it looks like you've got a plan for 13.4 feet from the from the side lot line. Correct. Okay. It's to the rear and the right of the house. Correct. That's my the, the addition conforms. Okay. okay. Any questions? Is this the drawing here? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I didn't get that. The la I think it's on the very last page. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah I did. Just I'm, I'm just wondering why it's dated 2007. It is. Or is that? I don't oh, know. that's the existing. When was the when was this addition planned? Is back in two thousand seven? No, um, that the, there was a dwelling there, and they um, we we bought we bought it in two thousand and eight, and they they um, raised and reconstruct. Yeah, it was a previous raised and reconstruct. The two thousand and eight. Yeah, in two thousand and seven, we bought it in two thousand and eight. Oh. So this was somebody else's plan, is what you're saying? Yeah. And you guys have decided it was a good idea? Yeah. Okay. No, that's, it. that's cool. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was just wondering why we were looking at a plan that's five years old. That's yeah. I didn't even notice that. Yeah. I'm actually familiar with the house. The, uh, they came and they did a, a massive renovation on the existing footprint, and they had, they had plans to uh, add on. At that time, um, I could have issued the permit. I could have made the finding, and when we, we tried to find the bylaw. Not required to come in front of the board, um, and yeah, it's it's, it's a valid five-year-old you know, okay. certified plot plan. Okay. All right. Is there anybody here that wants to be heard? <coughs> okay. Any further discussion? Not here. Mr. Motion Man, you want to make a motion? <laughs> sure. Uh, let's see. We already did the extension. Let's see. Request MLGL Chapter 40A Section 6 Special Permit Finding Construction of an Addition, uh, which is increase the gross square footage of pre existing non conforming single family dwelling uh, at 55 Kenneth Road by more than 20%. Uh, and based on the plan dated March 22nd, 2007, the application, uh, although that's it. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, can, can I say one thing or is it too late? <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on what you want. You're going to change our mind? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, no. Just, I, I think they said you had 90 days or something, but if it's possible to get an okay. Oh, we've been trying to get them out, yeah, as quick uh, as possible. Okay. Just to, because it snowed in October last year. <laughs> so <laughs> after that. All right, that's it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, my turn. Oh, I'll write that one. You want to write that one? Okay.
Jeff DeLisi, I'm here with Neil Murphy. I'm also here with uh, Paul and Susan uh, Conies, who live at Nine Surfside, which is shown as lot two on that plan. And Matt and Jill Murms is home at Seven Surfside Road. And just a little little way of background before I get to the, I gotta look over here so I can see it. Right now, the property is the Surfside condominium, which there's two housing units to it. And in essence, we're not looking to construct anything new or do anything. We're looking to change the form of ownership from a condominium ownership to two single lots. And what will be required is there is a connecting these, there's a breezeway and there's a covered porch, which would be removed as noted on the plan. And the lot number two at the Coney Zone at uh, Nine. At nine at nine Surfside, his ten this is an R three zone, is ten over ten thousand square feet, meets all the required dimensional setbacks in the zone. The the Mermis home back at uh, seven Surfside is actually has fifty feet of frontage and has twenty seven thousand as proposed. This is all one lot right now, you have to understand. It has uh, twenty thousand excuse me, twenty seven thousand square feet of uh, 26,845 square feet. And so we're, we're here under section two things or any other relief the board may request. Uh, we're, we're here under section uh, 610 2B and to request that basically we're not looking to do any other construction. We're just going to remove and then go to the planning board this. And what the, what the reality of this is is that even though it's a condominium ownership and that's the way the people own it and bought it and all these things for both the utility of the families to be able to have their own yard not have it be common area is something that's very desirable for both of them I don't see there's no question there's no increase of density or anything else and it's very simply as a matter of fact it becomes less intrusive because actually the connector of both these properties would be removed so in a nutshell that's that's what the petition is and what we're looking to do. As far as under 610 2B, meet all the dimensional requirements that are required, one of the conditions on this would be as, as required under section three, would be to the effect as a note would be on the plan that would be signed by the planning board, the A&R plan, that there be no further subdivision of lot one on that. So that's something that's required by the bylaw that will be on that plan. And also, as is shown on that plan, there'd be a note that there'd be a removal was already says to the breezeway and the covered porch so that when you create the lot line there wouldn't be other, any other zoning issues relating to that but in a nutshell that's what the, that's what the request is one of the things um, I I was wondering about as I looked at the plan is is where's <coughs> the access the access to which well to the back well actually I assume to the back property yeah. because each, prop, each property has its own driveway. Yeah, the plan doesn't reflect the driveway. Yeah, each it currently exists. Each, each plan has its where own driveway, driveway over its own frontage. Okay, where is it? I don't know. You know, it may not be reflected, but I, I don't understand where it's at. It doesn't show on this plan because this is a division plan. But the access to here is on this side going up to the garage. The access here is in front of the garage. So if it isn't shown on the plan, we'll put it on a plan, a condition that each property be accessed to its own front. The, the, the access, though, is from Surfside Road. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah it's flat as a so, pancake. Okay. So it, at first, it looks like that whole house is the frontage. The access shows it. Oh, yeah. And what are the proposed property lines? Right here, the property lines are right here and here. Oh, okay, I get it. Okay, so this is okay. Okay, I see it now. Okay. Yeah, so the dash line is a lot width, not the yeah. property line. And, and okay. Okay, so. And the, and the garage will end up on this property being how far from the lot line? 
from here to there. So that's well, that's not marked either. That should be marked on that plan. Yeah, it, it is marked on the plan. Oh, did, I, did I miss it? Where? Oh, that's the which one are you looking for? Oh, from, from this. It's kind of weird how that goes. Yeah, the, gra the garage and the plans, 8.5 in the back, 9.2 in the front. I think they'd be referring to the proposed uh, lot one. Oh. The back end of the garage. Oh, the garage is over 30 feet. Right, I, I, see, I just think, no, we could scale it and it's over 30 feet. It is but. over 30 feet in the house. That's from the house, not from right there. Right. Oh, okay. The ditch allows me yeah. all over the line. Yeah. That's actually a sideline setback, John. No. Yeah, as we come in now. Okay. Yeah. But but still over. I think it has to be eight feet. Yeah. What's considered? I, I'm talking about where the. I, I notice where the portico is, and then there's the garage, and all then the as you go, eight feet from there. The garage. And it's about. So this line is considered a, a side setback. The, the back line of the of lot. Let me finish. The light. The lot line. I'm sorry. This is lot one. Correct. No, lot two. Lot two. Right. Okay. The back line of lot two. And how? What? what is it? I know. And what's? And yeah, this well, is what I'm wondering. And what's? The, what's? The, that's what I'm talking well, actually, about. you look. You're not looking at. This. The plan that was submitted in the application. Okay. Yep. First, the front yard setback would actually be measured from the street, not from this line here. So it's actually 100 plus whatever that distance is, which is why the distance I think probably wasn't even that bad. Doesn't even show. Neil, do you, want, you understand what I'm talking about? You agree with that? What, what, I'm, I'm reading the. <laughs> Sarah was asking about what the front yard setback is, okay? From Relative the garage, to the garage. Relative to, well, she's asking what it is from here to here. Oh, to the line. And what I was saying is, is that the front yard setback is actually measured from we, the street. We don't have front yard setback. We have street or way setbacks. Right. We have what? Setbacks from street, street. or ways. Oh, OK. You know, so it's not referred to as a front yard, although in most cases, in most okay. cases it is front, yes. Um, Strangely enough, that would probably be a side yard. That would be considered it's, a side this yard. This would be a side yard. No. Yes. Okay. But what is it? Correct. What is it? Eight feet is what it should be. It's about twenty-five. Yeah. Well, what is it? I know what it's supposed to be. I can find out and give it to you exactly, but I didn't put it on the plan because it well should be on eight. that. All the okay. setbacks should well, be on the plans. Plan. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I, I believe it's going to be more than eight feet, but it it's still needs to be on the plan. Do you have any comments, Neil? Um, you know, I, I, I guess in, 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 um, in reality, really don't change, there's enough change of ownership. Yeah. It's board's discretion to issue a special permit. You should. Yeah. Yes. I, I think uh, we've done did something similar in the past still on Porter Street. Mm -hmm. Mr. Burns was at the meeting when that occurred. So. Did we do one at 8 Gannett Road, too? It was at 147 Border Street, John, on uh, Stephen okay. Lilly. Uh, Stephen oh, yes. Kristen Lilly back in uh, October. Okay. But you did do one on 8 Gannett Road. Yeah, I thought yeah, so. One on yeah. 8 Gannett Road also. As well. Yeah. Kind of right, right across the street from you guys. They had a similar situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they were undersized lots. Right. But uh, this is actually not an undersized lot. Right, and nonconformity was created, I believe, right. in that situation. In this situation, it's not. Yeah, I think it would be an improvement, too, with uh, kind of eliminating the, <laughs> the covered <laughs> walkway <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> that was just put up to kind of meet zoning yeah. originally. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it gives a kind of a commercial feel to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is there anybody uh, uh, in the audience that have comments? Hi, I'm Mary Claire Chase, and we own the property at 11th Street right next door. 
Um, how does this affect that property? Does it move over the land at all? Actually, it, towards the land? there's actually no change in the. So I see on the line here, I mean, on the, uh, sorry, on the form that was sent out, it says a. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see anything here with my. Like, it says front lot. What does that mean? What, I'm sorry, what did you say? What does what mean? The um, notice that was sent out said to create a 50 foot frontage lot. lot. Okay. What does that mean? It, it, what they're doing is taking the back of the house, and the, the access to the back of the house now is a 50 foot lot to the left side. So they're not moving any of the buildings. No addition is coming on. The only portion that they're changing is removing the roofed walkway between the two buildings okay. now. The, the question I have about this is the, the, unless the whole town has changed their uh, zoning laws, that oh, was okay. something to stop McMansions so that there were, wasn't there always supposed to be a connection between lots? They had to put the connection in in order to build that second house. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's because, it's because of, yeah, it's because yeah, yeah. they had yeah. double the lots. Well, actually, they had triple, triple lot, lot size. size. Yeah. And if you have double lot size, you can build a two family. And that's what they did. Right. right. So why, why would you remove it if that is consistent? Well, I, I'm not mm -hmm. well the, do you want me to answer? Go ahead. Yeah. No, the reason for this is all, between, between the two homes, there's no difference whatsoever other than removing the connection. So there's no additional construction. And all it is is a form change in ownership. So as opposed to having a condominium where both homeowners own all the land together, now it's now it's no, such I know what it is. I, I'm oh, against I, it. I didn't understand your question. The whole point of that was so that I'm assuming the point of this in situ is so people don't buy properties and create McMansions on these, you know, because it's already has affected the house at eleven Surfside immensely. To have these gigantic houses on this lot, okay? So I don't understand why it would be. But our law has. Oh, uh, you know what? We, we can't have a dialogue oh, between okay. people well, in that. No, let no let her let her finish no, her what question. What I'm saying is, I I think what you know the whole point of this, my assumption is they did this to begin with, and they were going to do exactly this and take it away once the house was built and sold, okay? But I don't get it. If you have the law to begin with, why you would allow that to happen? Well, the, the bylaws allow them to do that. They can come in and they can ask to have a 50-foot frontage lot created. Um, I still don't understand what 50-foot frontage means. 50-foot frontage means on, along a street, how, how far your property line runs. Right. Okay? It's situated it's 100 foot, generally. Okay. okay. But you can, under certain circumstances, have a 50-foot frontage okay so that's what right now they've got over 150 feet right it's a hundred I can give a little history I can give a little history of the 50 okay. foot okay I'd love, love to that would be nice um, up until about 1992 I think it was you could build a house on a lot that had a 50 foot of frontage and at least 5,000 square feet um, not considered a grandfather's lot under state law, which also allows it, but you have to fulfill certain requirements. As a matter of right, if you have 5,000 square feet and 50 feet in front of you, you can build a single family house. Um, the, the, the bylaw was changed to allow uh, a 50 foot frontage lot then by special permit on a lot that was property with the size of the neighborhood. In this case, it would be 10,000 square feet. The law was then changed probably five, six years ago to discourage large development and they required twice the, the lot size of the neighborhood. So it, it's, it's, it's been an evolution. Our original bylaw <coughs> was 50 foot of frontage, then it went to 100, but they still allowed you to build on a 50 foot frontage right. lot. It's now by special permit and it's, it's further restricted because you now have to have uh, double the lot size. And they have 26,845 feet <clears throat> where they're only required, they normally would be required, be required to have 10,000. So all that, so what they're asking to do is then to take down the, the wall. Just the bridge one. Just the connection. 
And they also. Wait, wait, what do you mean, Bree? Okay, again, we're not going to have a conversation. No, no, no I, I'm well, Why don't you come out and take, take a look at yeah, the, okay. the photographs? You live there, so I'm sure you're aware of it. Why do you have that? Okay. And what, I mean, is, so the frontage is considered the street side, not the ocean side? Right. Okay. You know what the breezeway is? Between the two? No, I know. I okay. didn't know that That's coming down. The That'll because be gone. Because you own a house in the ocean. I, we used to call it front, too. Yeah. Sorry, I thought they were talking about the lot on the left. That's what I thought is the front of the front front, so. Yeah, nope. In addition to that, they're right to the back lot. It could only be one home uh, when they do this as well. Can't be for the subdivided. Yeah, so the part that is over on the, the ocean. Left, the ocean side cannot be built on. I could, well, it could not be for the subdivided. There can't be another. They can't divide it up and say, now we want to have two lots because no. we only have to have a 10,000 square foot and, lot. Given so. up and, right. and, and under the bylaw, it's also limited to a single family. So they can't have a two family back there? No. Yeah, right. Can't put a two right. I mean, I, it's no offense against the new people who bought the front part of the house, but it has brought down a lot of property value for the house next door. And so that's why the concern was come here tonight and hear what. A lot of people might think this would increase your property values yeah. because you no longer have this breezeway so between. We don't have any privacy, so. Mm -hmm. eight, eight feet from the window that you can see right through, so. Why would that increase our property? You know, I'm, I, 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 I. I'm Claire Chase and I own the property. Hi, Claire. I would like to know why you feel that would have. Well, I didn't say it, it would, I said it might. I don't know, you, you, you know? How? Well, because it, I don't. Personally, no to, to me, this is not very attractive. Well, neither is I think that looks very so. commercial, and I think it'll probably look more attractive um, without that. I think I'd like to see that picture, and I can't walk up oh, to it. Oh, well, yeah, you know I'll, what? I'd be happy to. Thank you. Do you understand that structure is going to be, that's part of their permit that that structure is going to be removed? Okay. Anybody else have any comments? Sir? I, I just think it's. You, sort first of, of all, can you identify yourself? Sure, I'm Kevin Sullivan. I live on Wampatuck Ave, um, but my parents own a house on Five Gannon. Um, so I, the, the only thing that confuses me is when they built this house, I think it's a lovely house, it's very nice, they didn't want to put this portico up or this connector up, but the town for some reason said, no, the rules are you've got to have these two properties connected, so now they go through the expense of putting up this connection, and now they're turning it around and saying, oh no, it doesn't have to be connected, we're going to tear it down. It seems like not only is it an expense to the Murray's and and everyone else, it just seems like it's unclear what the rules of the town are. Well, they've made an application under a particular section of the bylaw. I, I understand okay. that. And, and the way the law is written, they can ask us if they can make this new law, okay? They take, their, they take out their pencils and erasers and draw a new lot line. And, and under the bylaws, we can do that. And yeah, I, I understand. in terms of how the property is gonna look, it's going to be exactly the same, except for the the connector between the two properties is going to be gone, and the ownership, legal ownership, instead of being a condominium where all everybody owns the whole property and their individual units and it's all common space. Now they're each going to have their own two lots. I, I fully get that. Um, I had thought before I came that that was going to be setting an odd precedence for the town, um, but it sounds like because of what went on at, is it 8, um, Gannett, that that ship has sailed. Um, well, I don't think that's, I think that was just another example. I don't think that right. set the precedent, just so another it, example. So if it's not setting a precedence, then I think, or if, if that has not already done that, then I think you're at risk of doing that. You've, you've got a property, they created another dwelling on the property. They set up a condominium relationship between the two existing dwellings on the property. The town created, there was a bylaw that said, or some rule that said they had to connect these two properties. And now you're saying, okay, we're done with that. Let's move to the next phase, tear that down, completely subdivide. Is that what's gonna happen in situate? Yeah. People are gonna 
build up and say, okay, I'm going to connect it to make sure I put all the dots in a row. And then as soon as that's done, I'm going to come back in front of the board and say, oh, you know, I want to change this. Neil, perhaps you help. I think this bylaw was added. When was this, this bylaw added? The, um, first of all, I think you've got to keep in mind that a two-family could always have been built on this lot as a matter of right. It could have been substantially larger. That that breezeway could have been, you know, uh, pre built House. Yeah. Uh, frankly. Uh, situates. I don't mean to interrupt. Uh, well, 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 please don't then, you know. Right? Let Mr. Duggan finish wanna, it, and I'm then, and then you can it, respond. And, and I've made the observation myself. Citrus bylaws are very liberal. We don't. We have no lot coverage bylaw uh, in that area. The setback is eight feet from the sideline. Very, very close to the sideline. Um, we up until I changed it, we had a 40 foot height limitation. It's now 35 feet, um, and that was done in response to the McMansions. Doubling the lot size was done in, in response to development. Uh, that was done in the last five or six years, and I think. I, I tend to take a common sense approach to this. Yes, they went that route, two family, they had to have an attachment. Um, nothing is, is really substantially changing by taking out a freeway and changing the part of ownership. I mean, what's there is there. You know, that, that's my opinion. The, the thing that's mostly confusing is why put up that attachment in the first place? There was no functional, it, this is a guy looking over the fence you know, making an observation. It doesn't seem like there was anything functional about attaching the two houses. It just seemed like a checkbox. Yeah. I've got to do this, check it off. Okay, my six months is up. That's right. Right. In, front of in order to make it one building, you have yeah. to have a right. roof detachment. Yeah. And, and that precedent, as I said before, that was set 30 years ago, before my time, uh, breezeways were considered a, uh, you know, an attachment that constituted one building. This needed to be one building at the time? Mm -hmm. In order for this to be built at the right, time, exactly. it needed to be one building, right, right, right. but that's no longer the case. And it wasn't so built. It, it is the case, uh, unless, unless you grant a special permit. Yeah. And it wasn't built. Got it. It was built as a separate building. They put up a roof walkway that connected the two structures, and that was it. It wasn't intended to be a single dwelling. It was two separate dwellings. Yeah, I mean, that's an arguable <laughs> point. It, it, there is no definition of what is a single building. But I've said here, the precedent has been set long before my time, uh, and Merritt Woods is an example. There are other examples all over. Uh, and, and that's just something passed on down through the ages. And, you know, I, um, um, and, and it's about as flimsy a thing as you can do to make it one building. I yeah. agree. But we yeah. do make them put a roof on it. Yeah. yeah. Mr. So, go ahead. One more, one more one question. One more statement. So <clears throat> I have spent my entire life in my head. and I just think you, you're running this risk of the whole town, the whole neighborhood, even coming down into Sand Hill, the town in the neighborhood, that we're going to see a transformation into something very different. It's something very non-situate. I mean, I, I sit on the, on the deck in one of the homes that used to look out over the ocean and now I, I see this huge house right in front of me, which is beautiful. It just isn't really situate. It just doesn't really fit into what I understand or what I've known is situate you know, my entire life. So I, th I think that's the risk you run. The chases, beautiful little house right on the beach. You know, I grew up dreaming about the Mermaid's house, the most beautiful house. I love this, love this property, love this house. And the transformation that it's gone through is it's not great. It's not good for the town. Yeah, just on the side, it's just to go to the point is, I, clients respectfully disagree. I think it's a beautiful house. But all that's been said, this isn't something where it's subject to. This is a very unique lot. It's like, how, how many lots in mine it on the waterfront at 27,000 square feet? Um, I, I, all five yeah, yeah there, there, there aren't any. And so I'm saying you have a very, you have a very, yeah, you have a very low density thing, as you can see on the on the uh, northerly side here. On the sideline setback, sixty feet, six zero. Yeah, there's a lot of space. Yeah, a lot of space. I know I've already spoken, and this is probably not the place to do this because it's. I think it's different. I mean, it's an issue that probably needs to be brought up somewhere else, but 
it's unbelievable. This, this lot was bought as a development property, okay? And it got developed from our neighbors who had lived there for, what, 50 years, okay? And I know it's within the laws to do it, and they did everything exactly by the rules because the developer knew exactly how to do it. This is like, um, Okay. All right, all right. This no, no, no. You know what, idea. folks? Okay. Folks? Okay, but you're going to get house for sale after you develop All right, all right, all right. Stop. I'm going to end it if we can't do it okay, in I, 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 can't, I can't say something? I'm at, yes, but no, I just, I we're not going to have a. Okay. You okay. want to finish what your statement is? Thank you. I just want to say, I want to agree that this whole, the people have owned these houses for so many years. The neighborhood is going downhill, and I don't know where the place is to develop this. I mean, to talk about this as a town. It might not be this one little space, okay? But the whole town and the whole mining area is getting, all of the oceanfront property is going downhill. And all the people who own this are leaving, and it's, it's heartbreaking, okay? Not just that the values are going down. It's also people's lives and it's heartbreaking. And it's also monetarily screwing people, okay, that live there. Okay. So somebody, people, does somebody, uh, we're gonna hear from someone new, ma'am? Um, I'm Suzanne Conies, I own the property in the front. Right. And you know, I understand the angst that you're going through, I totally do. Um, but I do think that if you walk around the area, there are several houses that have a condominium attachment. And I believe yours is set up that way as well. You've got a residence in the front and somebody Different but related. Yeah, lives in the back. Right, please. But there's other. Folks, there are, all right, folks, okay. so please. We cannot have conversations. This is not a dialogue. If you want to go out into the hall and just uh -huh. chat about okay. it philosophically, please. But, you, you know, uh, honest to God, I understand everybody. I understand both sides. But, but things change, okay? And the, the mechanism by which change happens if this board is contained within this book. And this guides what we can and can't do. And they have met the requirements and they're here for the special permit. And um, I think, you know, I'm sorry that it changes things, but things change. Town change, towns develop. This is the law. <coughs> If you don't like the law, if you don't like the way it's going, get involved yourself, work to change the bylaws. But right now, this is what governs what we get to do and what people get to do. And if it's, you know, that nothing's happening in, in you know, at this application that is illegal. One last Special comment. permit is not the law, so they're asking to go against the law. Okay. Anybody, uh, anything else? Mr. Murphy, do you have a comment? Uh, I'm going back to a little bit of the history that Neil Duncan brought in. I was elected to your board in 1963, and in 1966, I was the one as chairman who changed the bylaw for allowing 50-foot frontages and making them special permits. They had to go to the Board of Appeals. Prior to that time, they could do it any way they wanted. In Minot, if you go to the Curly Home on Gannett Road, they did a 50-foot strip and built a house up and back. They also, they've done that all over town long before this. All up Border Street, there were 50 foot lots, the whole length of Border Street. Leading back, if you go about Border Street by what is now the River Club, from the River Club back, I think there are six 50 foot lots together, side by side, and houses up and back. That was changed to prevent what they're complaining about. That was a law right up until 1966. When it changed to allow the two family house to become something if you had more than double the frontage on the lot that made it possible to do what they're doing now. They did try to do it through going to the, the ZBA in the beginning and didn't get the permit, so they had to go to the two-family home and splitting it the way they did as condos. Now they've come back and they've asked you to split that into two lots, which I think is absolutely an improvement. It's something that gives two separate people no more condominium law and the right to use their own property by themselves. So I favor, and I, for the record, I grew up in Minot. I've lived there since 1941, so, and I'm 76, so I've been there a long time. I certainly know the chases and I know the other people there too. And I've seen things happen down Surfside Road that have happened 
a different distance by far. The difference here is it was a Sawyer home, which is a huge home out back. That's why it's so frontageous to people. All right, anybody else from the board? No, just a comment. To, as I say, I, I still think to take the existing kind of two family and make it two single family homes essentially is what we're doing here. Right. And they also give up the right in the back to expand too, so I think there is some protection there. And uh, we've done this in the past in similar situations to a, a few other, over the past couple of years anyway, a few other homes. I think the reason for it is, is it works in this situation. Uh, you know, I think the, the idea of kind of cleaning up the, the walkway, if you will, and, and uh, you know, separating it that way, I think we'll work on, and they're both, they're both on town sewer, I take it anyway, so. Right, they both septic have septic systems that they put in, now they're connected to town sewer also. Right, so those. <laughs> Frank? I, I, I did have a question, I guess. If, if, if there wasn't a restriction here that you're, that you're agreeing to, is it it's true that this property in the back, the one on the ocean, could be expanded? I'm, I'm just trying to understand what the restriction is no, that you're adding. The restriction is, is, one, you can only have a single family, so you okay. cannot go to get additional units on this. Got it. And so that's that. And the other thing is there's a further thing which will be noted on the plan that's filed with the A&R under the bylaw that it cannot be further divided. So they can't divide this under, yeah, in other words, it's well, prohibited, like in other words, you can't, you couldn't even get a variance to do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. I understand. All right. I think, uh, I think I'll close the discussion. Unless anybody has any new point to bring up. Okay. Except that we will sell the house just as soon as we can, if we can. Since they built a house right on our line, I'm not so sure whether we will be able to sell the house or not. Okay. We just want to get out of there. Okay. In 50 years. I'm sorry. They're going to be sorry to see you go because I bet you're a lovely neighbor. Well, I hope we have been. We've never had a problem with neighbors. Before. All right. Does somebody want to make a motion? I'll move to grant the special permit request. Uh, for 7 Surfside Road, pursuant to Section 6102B of the Zoning Bylaw, granting uh, to create a 50 foot frontage lot at 7 Surfside Road. Second. That's, I should say, as shown on the drawing. As shown on the plan. Yeah. Right. I can get a date. Mr. Murphy. To. I could July never real, read Mr. Murphy's writing. <laughs> July 2012 filed with the uh, with the board. And uh, do we have to mention the lot at nine in that as well? Or is that, say again? Do we have to mention the oh, lot at nine? No, the lot at the nine seven is the fifty it, foot. No, it complies with all the dimensional. Right, 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 right. right. So. Yeah. Okay, and and you will um, you'll correct the plans and get them in just for the record. Yeah, absolutely, we'll have this in, in the next okay. couple of days. Thank you. All right, uh, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. You're good, You're good to go. Uh, you guys going to do the decision? Yes. Yeah. I'll do it. Yeah, we'll do the decision, Sanfi. Sarah, can you tell me what's what's the on, on that permit extension? Do you have the citation for what what act it is? I mean, what bill number? I've got a I've got some copies if you can have one. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I caught that. Anything else? Any okay. No minutes? <laughs> A motion to adjourn. Second. Welcome to chairmanship. All those in favor. <laughs> <No>. <laughs>